is Jimmy's podcast, season 11. I'm a podcast, we coming back for more, I bet you never thought we'd last, and neither did we. Wow. Breaking news, show reviews, rubber boots, reacts, and other social media crap. And if nothing else, you know you're gonna have a laugh. You're gonna have a laugh, oh yeah, because this is the podcast. I uh, I need to address. I don't want to start on a negative note. I want need to address the traffic situation in the fine city that we live in. Uh, Jimmy had to go downtown yesterday. It's a rare trip. He doesn't venture out of the Aurora too much, unless he comes to to work. And for our listeners not familiar with the GTA, TSN is located. What would you say? There's Toronto, and then you hit the 401. The 401, like, dissects Toronto and then all the northern areas. North right? York, I guess, yeah. 401 would be. Right. And then north of that is the northern TSN areas. is located right on the 401. So where I live in Aurora, which is north, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's kind of like halfway going to downtown Toronto to come to work, right? That's fair mm-hmm. stuff. You're yeah, in Bradford, about halfway, yeah. So north. So, like, for the visuals on YouTube, there's Aurora. There's Here's mm-hmm. there's Stoff and Bradford. There's Jimmy and Aurora. There's the 401. Mm-hmm. There's TSN. And then Lester's right around the 401, and then Puffy's way down here somewhere in mm-hmm. downtown Toronto. You got to draw the gate around this community, though. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. That's right. There's, there's, the, there's the gate for Lester. So uh, I'm in Yorkville, Yorkville yesterday. Ooh. And uh, Wanky. Oh. yeah. Bag shopping. No, I was not bag shopping. Just had to be in Yorkville for a reason that's too boring to talk about um from yorkville leaving at 3 30 to my home jimmy got home at 6 20 no, that's wow. two hours yeah. Yeah. and 50 minutes no, i could have about right. driven to kingston to see my daughter yes you could have. i could have gone halfway to what sudbury sioux st marie i could have gone up there somewhere right you could have halfway to ottawa it, halfway, I could have been three quarters of the way to Ottawa. Now, I have numerous complaints here. Waze, first of all, Waze is a. Are you guys Wazers? No, I am. I'm a Google Maps guy. Google, Google Maps, Maps all day. Waze is a useful yeah. app. Like if I'm going, you know, to find an address, but Waze in traffic is flawed. Right, because it doesn't doesn't calculate building traffic necessarily. It takes you sometimes like off the highway for like one exit and then back on the you highway. You know what I feel like Waze does? What? Is it knows all these drivers heading in the same direction, and once there's a lot of traffic, it just starts splitting you up. And sometimes you get split up into a stupid direction where it ends up almost taking you more time. Correct. And that's so, why I, I stick with Google. Again, this isn't this isn't exactly. great uh podcasting you for yourself. non-Toronto people, but I pop in the Waze in Yorkville, and it tells me to go all these back-ass roads to the Allen Expressway up to the 401, to the 427, to the 400. I don't trust it. I, I don't trust ways when it takes you back roads. You don't want to mess with Eglinton, the Allen. It's a disaster, right? So I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to take the, the DVP and just suck up the traffic and put on a, a podcast or whatever. Put on the best of Lester McLean and the Grave Diggers. Just mellow my way up the DVP. <laughs> So the DVP was a disaster, as it always is, up to the 401. But usually things, you know, click at the 401. And Brooksy was in the car with me, so you got the double lane once you get north of the 401. Also, you now, got all the, uh, the the second guessing because of the backseat driving. That's accurate. <laughs> Actually, she was tired and kind of sleeping, so I was had a bit of freedom from that. So past the 401, there's a giant, you know, digital sign that sometimes tells you about so it takes me, I don't know, an hour to get to the 401 or something ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But then just when I get past the 401, it says 407, three right lanes blocked. Oh, right? oh no. 407 is about, on a normal drive, five minutes north of the 401. So, But there's no real place to get off because you're not going to get off at Shepherd at Finch. Those are disasters, right? So I'm like, oh, I'll suck it up. It was a disaster. Like, it was an hour. An hour to go those four kilometers, just not even moving whatsoever. So finally, I get up there. I'm like, I got to get the hell off of this thing and just get on the 407. 
So I take the four, get on the 407. I'm finally moving again because I was literally losing my mind. I'm not a good travel person. It's one of my great flaws in life. I'm already two hours into this disaster. Then I get on Bathurst. Waze doesn't say anything about this. I'm cruising along Bathurst. There's an accident. They've shut down Bathurst. Oh, my God. And so now you've got all these millions of people being guided through some little residential neighborhood with 18 stop signs. And if you put a 1,000 cars in a residential neighborhood with 18 stop signs, it's not going to go well. No. So the bottom line, I think, the lesson I've I've taught to all our listeners today is, uh, A, don't live in Toronto. Or if you live, (laughs) don't drive. And uh, B, uh, I don't know if you should trust the ways. Okay. Well, may I say I, a couple of things? Yeah, yes, please. Lester. No, well, first of all... Speak I loudly, though, because your, your microphone's not functioning well today, so we need you to project. It's like Garrett Morris in the School of Heart here. Let me say a couple of things to you today. <laughs> I, find, I find that the traffic in Toronto is bad because of construction, number one. Uh, it sounds yes. to me like, unfortunately, you had a very bad situation yesterday where it was a perfect storm, these lane closures leading up to the 407. But... Uh, one thing I will say is this week in, Tor- in Toronto and in, in, in our GTA, it's March break. So yeah, it should be traffic. It should have been. It lighter. should be less traffic. Do you yeah. think that it was 20 degrees and sunny in Toronto yesterday? It was gorgeous, which made me more frustrated being stuck in a car. But yeah, sure. it should be on the course. Do you think people lose their minds the kind of the same way they lose their minds? You know, the first snowstorm of the year. When I used to live in Vancouver, when there was a snow in Vancouver, people there would be accidents all over the place because people forgot how to drive in the snow. Mm-hmm. And sure. is it the same way that people have kind of spring fever and they're all going way too fast on the roads and thus there's accidents and there's lane closures everywhere? I don't know. No, I, th- I think it's more so that this city has been under construction for the past 40 years and will be for the next 40 years. Like they're always working on some. There isn't a road in this city where there isn't a lane closure somewhere. And Very I think true. it all just adds up in the end. <laughs> Positive. Yeah, but- yes, go Lester. No, no, no. Uh, one more thing I will add. It's daylight savings time. This past weekend mm-hmm. always uh, screws people up, and there's always a, a high, an uptake of accidents in the week following uh, daylight savings for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Google it. Google it. Or that does not feel it. like a real fact. Science. It's, 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 a, it's a real fact. The, uh, a real fact. Puff, look it up. The only positive, as I said, Brooksy Brookie taking an extensive nap yesterday um, mm-hmm. has convinced me that when I – Go have to go to Toronto with her or something. Uh, I will drug her. Mm. Oh, <laughs> right. That's so I need legal. to. It would be good to have record of you saying that. Well, I need yeah. to study the um, dosage, the anesthetic guys. You know, because you know how you can go. You go for like a minor surgery, or what was that thing I had? What is that thing I had? The uh, you know the anal probe there. What's the hernia? That the hernia? No. Uh, a brothel. Um, when they check out your prostate and all that. What do you Col- colonoscopy. 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 So they gave you just enough. Actually, I was awake for the last one. But my first one I ever had, they... they <laughs> By request. That was your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think I'll... I knew it was I'll, coming. I'd like I to take this yeah. one in. I'd like to see it all. Do you have to look me up? <laughs> well, it's fine, you know. Just, I don't know. They put some freezing in there, and you're kind of a little bit drowsy, but she's talking to you the whole time. And you're watching the camera probe around down there and seeing all sorts of stuff. Were you telling them where to go? <laughs> <laughs> like, hang the left. 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 <laughs> you tell me, Brooks. Let me, 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 me Brooks see if she was in the colonoscopy with me. Left. Did they use waste? <laughs> <laughs> That's well, there's Google Maps the people. They know <laughs> the, the, the pathway is clogged. Please <laughs> exit here. Um, what was I talking about? Anyway, the first time I had one of those, they gave you enough, so you're just out for like a half an hour, and then you're boom back in. Mm-hmm. So I just I need to study anesthetic anesthesiology and uh, just sure. get like the perfect dosage to get when Rooksy gets in the car to get her from there to there, so I don't have any of the backseat driver problems. Remember when the A team they used to knock BA out after when they fly? They'd always knock them out. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> why, why? There was, was that? no long term side effects with that. Yeah, <laughs> he was afraid of flying. He's afraid of flying. <laughs> the A team. He didn't like flying. That's why they knocked them out. Hey guys, um, this is exciting. We didn't. We weren't here last week. How's everybody doing? Um, Good. You missed. Uh, a, we didn't have a trade deadline post postscript mm-hmm. on the podcast. It was. You know what? We survived, eh, Puffy? It was a fairly... It I was another it was a, one of our best ones. Now, I, I, we, listen, I love it. From our standpoint. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
We need to clarify that because, like, if you were watching at home, it wasn't very exciting. But from our standpoint, we're just trying to get through nine hours. And it was, you know, there was, like, be, like, a trade every hour. We got that Thomas Hurdle trade at the end. So Vegas gave us yeah. a lot to talk about. It was Bobby some good coming bits. Through. O-Dog was, uh, did the belt thing, came in like a boxer. We had that Rocket Rod thing Smith. thing was amazing. I loved it. I saw the, the show the night before with the band, and then and then uh, when they, with Hazy and uh, and the Noodles bringing them in there, that was awesome. I thought it was really, listen, I loved the show. I'll be honest with you. I thought it was great. Thank you, Lester. Even, Bruce, even Bruce Boudreaux, on. excellent. Wayne Simmons, first timer. What was that? What was the last was great. Thing? I said, even though I wasn't on the show, I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> We miss you. You're making a comeback at some point here, one of these years. They, Lester, I, I suggested that. you, and they said they couldn't afford your freelance rate. <laughs> <laughs> How about Bobby I Mack, know. by the way? Let's talk about this. This guy is in, you know, he calls it like pseudo retirement. He's basically like, he shows up like, what, 10 days a year? A hey, Puff? Does like two uh, leaf games, a couple of draft shows. <laughs> Well, World Juniors, he's busy. World Juniors, of course. So maybe maybe 20, that, 25 days a year. He's living the good life, and he deserves every bit of it. You know, he, he jokes that he's the outsider now. He doesn't make the calls anymore. He doesn't do, like, the work that Pierre and Dregs and Chris Johnston do. Bobby Mack, the king, just shows up <laughs> five minutes to three or whatever, trade deadline day. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, guys, uh, Thomas Hurdle's been traded by San Jose to Vegas. What? <laughs> <laughs> just just drops the bomb out of nowhere. Amazing. It's just he's Amazing. a legend. That's just absolutely legendary. Bobby Mack I, didn't, Bobby I didn't Mack, think, you know. I didn't yeah. think Dregs should have stormed off the set though like that. I thought that was inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you, Puffy, uh 24 hours before deadline. I, I felt like I was not gonna make the show. I was losing my voice. And I just had like a little, little cold that week, but suddenly my voice was going. And when I got to the hotel that night, I was like this, I'm going, Oh crap. No. Oh yeah. I was That's chugging bad. lemon, honey and tea. And somehow miraculously I woke up the next morning and could speak because usually when it goes that way, it continues to go South. Right. When you start to lose it. Mike, Mike Lane did say he brought a suit. He was ready to step in. <laughs> yes, he was. So anyway, sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, the week before trade deadline, I took Brooksy and uh, Jared and his girl, Rachel. We had a little quiet weekend away in the Muskoka. We just rented a cottage for a couple of nights. Uh, very nice. Hugo had a great time. There was, you know, we pulled up to the place. There was like nine deer standing in the driveway, you know, just that's just the kind of escape you want. So a beautiful spot. Um, go to my Instagram if you if you're looking for a cottage. It was a really nice spot. Uh, that's a free ad for the people who own the car. Jimmy, it, it didn't freak you out because it looked like that scene from that end of the world movie? Oh, yeah. Where all it, the tears. It did kind of look like that <laughs> when they showed up in the morning. <laughs> uh, have we ever done the... We still haven't done the recap. No, we're waiting for... Pu we're Puffy still, still got to watch it. for Puffy to watch it. I read it. <laughs> <laughs> That's did. almost good enough. Um, so the point was they had a game. You know how these cottages sometimes have like party games there, you know, like Risk or Monopoly or whatever. Well, this uh, this place had, uh, uh, I guess, I think it's called Either Or or whatever. It's basically Puffy's Hypotheticals. Do you guys know the game? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's called Would You yeah, Rather. Heard Would You Rather, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's yeah, a great yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is basically just Puffy's Hypotheticals. In a in a board game, so we got we got scammed on that baby. Um, but I well, thought I'd well, I put the work in. I took. In fairness, they did put the legwork in. <laughs> yeah, <they kind>. <laughs> <laughs> we should check. Maybe that's one of our listeners. They just went with it in season one. So basically, I, I was going to steal. It would the be Andrew Arsenal. <laughs> Either yeah, I'm thinking Arsenal or uh, maybe that. Ricky Schmidt. They're sitting on a hundred million right now. Can you make money off a board game? When I was young, I always wanted yeah. to create, create a like, so. trivial pursuit. Well, so. well okay, like but any more millionaires? I guess Maybe very not. rare. Yeah, what, are, what about like Cards Against Humanity? Those things are still like yeah. when something even, catches even, on. Even going old school, Snakes and Ladders. Like come on, there was a reason those games were so popular. <laughs> anyway, I was going to steal some of the cards just for uh, light days on the podcast. 
Instead, I just took photos of the cards. Oh, perfect. so I thought I'd uh, bring them up once in a Couldn't while. Buy the game. Seeing that, seeing that Puffy's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe you can't well, make money on. Hug we can't expect this, this. Is, this is people why you can't make it. money. This is why you can't make money on games because people pirate the f- out of them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll throw a couple at you today. Oh, perfect. And we will sure. pop, pop these in. Uh, would you rather gyrate spastically? in front of your girlfriend's parents for a full two minutes or punch your grandmother lightly in the Adam's apple. Oh, for sure. The first, now, there's a presumption that all these people are alive and stuff like that. Yes. What kind of sicko are you? I don't, I, I don't know. You're going to dig up your grandmother and punch her in the Adam's apple. Well, quickly, I was thinking more about my, All right. The girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. My girlfriend's parents are both dead. So, Oh, well, and also my grandma is dead. Can we just not, sorry, can we not sorry. imagine for a second? Sorry, I was I wondering, are you gyrating at the graveyard? <laughs> okay. Next question. <laughs> Let's see. This is the one you took a picture of, Jimmy. <laughs> I know. This is the selling point. There's like six questions on each card, okay? <laughs> Fine, I'll do another one. Would you rather have a two meter to- two meter long tongue or a two meter long toe. This goes back to our kind of like our hypothetical when we were talking about the shark that bit off the foot. And would you be able to uh, for five billion dollars or whatever have a wear a flipper for your whole life? Remember? Well, I mean, so two, you have meter- to have a two meter long tongue or a two meter long toe for your entire life, Puffy. So your your tongue is just hanging out of your mouth the entire time, basically. Yeah. Down to the ground. This is, this is longer than your height. It's actually dragging on the ground. But your toe is also extending six and a half feet. <laughs> but it would probably be easier to cut your toe off. I, well, no, I think that <laughs> the hypothetical would be that you have to live with it. You can't cut it off. You have to live with it. Gun to your head, Puffy. Gun to your head. Well, you probably have a you'd probably have a career in the adult entertainment industry with the tongue. So yeah, I, mean, I think I think you'd do okay with the toe as well. well I, think, I think there would be some subgenres that you would ultimately create. Seriously, you'd have my OnlyFans. Yeah, your OnlyFans for your giant toe would be insane. I, here, I got one for you. I just came up with this on my own. If we were to each have a My OnlyFans page, yes, what would be the characteristic physical that they would want? You know what I mean? Like My OnlyFans, I take it. I know it can get, you know, there's probably a lot of boobs and butts, guys. But, you know, there's foot fetishes on there, right? And ear fetishes (laughs) and hand fetishes and stuff. What do you think the people would want to see? From each of us, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a blank screen. Yeah, I'm gonna, I say, think I'm gonna say my ass. Your ass. <laughs> Someone oh. thinks highly mm-hmm. of themselves. So, so I'm told. So I'm told. I'd sign up for that. I'd sign up for that <laughs> right there. <laughs> The reason I asked this question actually is that we are going to include it include it on the Rubber Boots Parthenon. You're going to get free shots of each one of... So you get Lester's ass. Um, Puffy. I think you have a strong chin. I do have a strong chin. Oh, dear God, where is this going? That's a a, a different type of fetish. (laughs) Me, I don't got a lot to offer, frankly. But I think I have a very good James, don't sell yourself short. Yeah, you got a good torso. I have a good back V. Yeah. You know what I mean? I told you, like, I saw Jared, he was working out the other day. I'm like, you you know, you were gifted your V. What do you call that besides a V? You know, when you have, like, decently yeah. wide shoulders and then, like, good trap. Narrow west. Back. Yeah, yeah, now your traps. traps. What are these? Things? Traps? No, these are traps. Right? Yeah. Traps are traps. Up higher. Traps. Traps. Oh, traps are higher. These are lats. I think they're higher. Lats. Yeah, lats. you have the big lats. So you lats. Got lats. Lats. Yeah. lats. I'm going to start on my OnlyFans. Just for my biology, except I have a lot of uh, a lot of heavy freckling, which might impact me. Have you guys seen, uh, like, for example, on Twitter? I've had 
OnlyFans ads pop up, but they're the ones where they're trying to like sell you on that OnlyFans isn't just adult entertainment. There's comedians. There's this. There's that. Have you seen that or? Oh, no. so we could just oh. go on with senses of humor? Yeah. So, the, well, then that's what they're trying to market. <laughs> they're trying to market it as that it's more, I guess, because they want more people to sign up. I just wonder if you're a creator and you're going on OnlyFans, if you're putting, if you're passing out of your OnlyFans after, people are going to assume you only do one <clears> thing. Yeah. That's it's, it's, you know I mean? it's, like, it's a very reasonable assumption <laughs> for the app. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm serious. I'm not trying to be funny. I like, it's like, it's a lot of, look, I mean, any, 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 any of these women. Some of you see on Instagram that are parading around in booty shorts or they have unusually large breasts. You go, you, you if you click on the thing, you see they've got an OnlyFans account. So mm-hmm. right. I never go in. Yeah, Lester, would so, you, you know, make if it. you knew <laughs> now that you are, uh, now that you're looking for, you know, maybe a, another career outside of music with your time away from mm-hmm. TSN, would you, if you knew you could get 10,000 My OnlyFans follower, would you actually post pictures of your of your of your butt no i would not i would not hmm. i would not. for ten thousand bucks you yeah. know no that's ten thousand followers month. so that's like what ten dollars a month 10k he's gonna make 20k a month 20k a month lester 100 oh, i would oh my lester, god lester you don't have to do bear they can be like little underwear shots that could be Sorry, worse man. not gonna do what a classy guy hmm. what a- jimmy oh. would you do it of my yeah. my V, yeah. <laughs> I think I have a feeling I, people might take that a different way, but I hope people just turned on right now. Yeah, I do something with my V anytime. <laughs> Pictures of my V, videos of my V, anything with my V. La, la, la. I flex my V. Just post the hell out of that stuff. Mm. Um, sorry, I want to stray here. So do you want to? You don't want me to do any more of these uh, either ors? Would you rather? No, no, this is fascinating. Would you rather never be able to take your pants off or never to be able to put them on? Where do I live? Uh, yeah, like these, these could these are impossible <laughs> questions because they're actually you can't do any. Like you you can't go outside your house if you don't have pants. But if you're gonna wear pants, you're always gonna <laughs> yourself. It's a successful board game. It okay, so be. what's a, no? It Honestly. can't like this is no. This All right, is, fine, fine. I'll find this you. This is why it ended up for free at that cottage. Jesus, you found. yeah. Would you they rather be a matador with a club <laughs> foot? Hold on, a matador with a club God. foot. Go on. Okay, a matador with a club foot or a librarian with problematic flatulence. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> stupid. Hold on. So Jeez. club foot is what you you can't walk uh, like you walk with a limp. I don't yeah. Know. Would you rather have fingers that can staple or saliva with naturally what, adhesive what, qualities? What happened to the club? What, I, what kind of a club is it? Is it a driver? Is it a... Uh, yeah, a I thought you would have went for the club foot. Jimmy's paying attention now. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Imagine that. <laughs> You're funnier when your mic doesn't work. <laughs> I have to focus more on you. <laughs> Puffy, you could use that. I ask you to staple a lot of things. Uh, when we're on the set, okay. But would Jimmy, you rather have fingers that can staple or saliva with naturally adhesive if, qualities? If Puffy had uh, fingers that could staple, that could get very dangerous for him. Very, very. <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. The, the, the naturally uh, adhesive qualities. <laughs> you better not touch. You better not touch my V. <laughs> he won't. His his I'm pants not, will just I'm stuck not, to his crotch. Uh, exactly. I'd say. Sorry. I'd be in a little bit more trouble. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I can't make the pot. I'm in the hospital again. <laughs> or he's on the pot and we just can't see his the, hands. The, the surgery is getting easier and easier, though. I don't know. I have to look through this. I didn't do a very good job editing. I just kind of took shots at terrible. him. Also, that's so, terrible. That's but I maybe I can forward these to Puffy and he maybe can we can make a game like Puffy's hypotheticals and we'll actually have better hypotheticals. Well, here's one that this kind of re- yeah. relates to one from a few weeks ago. Mm. Would you rather fight three thousand butterflies or one bobcat? 3,000 butterflies, butterflies. yeah. Yeah, the butterflies, yeah. I don't know. They could swarm pretty good. 3,000. I don't think they can kill you, though. Well, they're after you. you Remember, they're being aggressive. Okay, they're being aggressive, but, like, what? Just keep your mouth shut, and you'll be okay. Like, the the only way they can kill you is if you swallow them, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but Puffy couldn't fight back because his hands are stuck on his dick. Oh, that's... (laughs) 
<laughs> That's Puffy's problem. He should have taken the staple fingers. I well. got into butterfly porn. <laughs> Hey, uh, do you got like a things that I saw on social? Because I there's a yeah. breaking story out that I wanted to share with you guys. Oh, please, uh, please do it. Is um, it the fact that you look like the new crypto king or no? Well, oh, look, oh, you know, you know, yeah. like a hundred people, a hundred people have sent me that this week. Uh, this one here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, you're wearing the same hoodie right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're just you not on your yacht with king. your douchey friends. Oh my god! Look at the guy with the, I love the guy with the, with the shirt friend. So, uh, for our listeners, I'll describe that this is a tweet. Uh, some, I guess, crypto guy sent out saying this is who you're trading against, and he thought it would look super cool. He then got roasted by a bunch of people online for how douchey it looks, and then some people started sending it to us saying that it looks like. <laughs> well, no, there's like there's videos too, yeah. and I oh, literally yeah. like everybody keeps sending me this thing, <laughs> and. He is like I get his whole bit is being like the douchiest guy in the world. Okay, right. So yeah, so Crypto Jimmy or Dan Morgan? <laughs> it, it's Who, Crypto who's Jimmy. The better oh, yeah, I think. Crypto Do Jimmy you guys think I, I actually look like that dude? <laughs> no. <laughs> it looks like Jimmy with an allergic reaction. No. Like his face. You is know who he looks awesome. like? Hmm? He looks like Zach Hyman. Seriously, with sunglasses. Because I get I get sent. It does look like Zach Hyman. I get sent a lot that say I look like this guy, and then I keep getting sent this as well. I just like, <laughs> yeah, no. okay. I'm not. I'm not Chris Hemsworth. Okay, mm -hmm. stop it. Stop stopping me on the street. I'm not Chris. I'm not even Liam. Liam, that you're trading against. All right. Um, get on with the show. Great. What do you got for us? Get on Great. with the show. Uh, all right. So here we've got a video clip. And this is uh, an interview with Tyrese Halliburton, uh, who plays for the Indiana Pacers. Uh, and he was on Pat McAfee's show. And uh, just take a listen to what happened. I think for the more casual basketball fan, it wasn't necessarily appealing. You know, like yeah. post-basketball is not appealing unless it's Jokic or Joel or Shaq, you know what I mean? Like you have that, two different voices. I do. People say that all the time. Did you hear? I, I mean, oh, this yeah. is, yeah. I, I didn't know if it was our microphone. I never <laughs> catch it. You know, like I watch podcasts after, and I'm like, pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's like so. This is apparently a thing because I saw some people commenting saying Tyrese is at it again. Mm -hmm. And like, there's an, like he. Yeah, there's another one in a post game when he's talking and his voice goes in and out. Completely like, different. It switches literally mid sentence. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Does. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I wonder. He probably just could, has could some it be a sort saliva of thing. Saliva, or the way his voice box is slightly constructed, maybe something moves over and mm -hmm. just the airway passes. Like I think it's just the way airway passes through something. It, it just keeps on switching back and forth for him. Like kind of how you can force your voice to be higher or lower. His just kind of does it naturally on its own. Yeah, I, I think like I I'm a little lower when I'm broadcasting, probably because mm -hmm. I'm trying to sound professional than if I'm here or I'm talking to you guys on the phone. Right? There's a little bit of a difference, probably. Yeah. Or if I'm doing, let's say, yeah. if you hear my voice on a story, I always take it down a couple of octaves. Tonight, sure. Leafs Flyers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But, but then that's then a that's a whole different sometimes. story. That's completely different. Yeah, it's weird. Where did it's you hear? Did you see the? Um... <laughs> are you doing a bit right now, or are we really on delay? It's the old standoff. <laughs> Who's gonna talk? <laughs> no, please finish, Lester. But uh, but uh, uh, it's just really weird that his voice just changes all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Like just it just that's strange. That's strange. So uh, Joe Biden did the State of the Union address last week. And then they chose this young up and coming senator, I believe, from Minnesota to do the Republican retort afterwards. And it was heavily mocked. Scarlett Johansson did something on Saturday Night Live on it because they put this woman in a kitchen and she obviously was reading off a teleprompter and overacted like you'll never. It was like, Joe Biden, what are you thinking? Right. And it was just it was hilarious. And, and then they were playing whatever channel I was watching the next day. They were playing her regular voice. And she didn't even sound remotely like she sounded in the thing. 
like it was just a completely different human being. So I don't know, maybe people under stress or in a situation like that when they're trying to impress people, but that that's yeah, weird. That's weird. Weird, weird stuff. Uh, what else also, you got, buddy? Uh, I, I was uh, I was on the web, and I don't even remember how I came across this because it's an uh, article for 2013. But I'm gonna wow. leave. Uh, I'm gonna read you the uh, headline: TSN's Duthie proud after son buys Expos cap. And this is from August 21st, 2013. And I'm just want to ask, how slow was the news week <laughs> that week that the fact that your son bought an Exco post cap made the what news was it cycle in like a in regular the, paper? The Gazette. <laughs> what I don't know. I actually remember the Montreal this. Gazette. Oh my god. I, I don't know why it didn't come up on the pod at the time stop because uh if I remember it may have, we probably forgot. If I was in, remember correctly, I was in New York City with my family on summer vacation mm-hmm. and my son went into like a lid store or whatever and bought an expos cap and i posted like maybe on twitter or instagram or whatever mm-hmm. i just posted a shot of him with the hat on saying never been more proud because obviously i was a big expos guy mm-hmm. and you were right like i saw that like it popped up on you know the next day or whatever on the the on the web and i'm like <laughs> What? <laughs> so whoever was the sports reporter, does it have a name on it? Uh, hold on, I just closed it. I'm sure it does. It was Stu Cohen. Stuart Stu Cowan, Cohen. I think, was Cowan. the sports editor at the Gazette as well. Wow. So maybe they were at the time where they were just, you know, oh online. They were trying to bump up their online. And just they were trying stories. to see what works with us. Writing maybe. stories about everything. <laughs> Can you imagine just like a passionate every, all the editors and everyone's just gathering? They're like, "All right, guys, we're going with the Duffy Cat story." <laughs> I, want, I want everyone on this. Boulder font. Boulder font. Uh, did they get stuff. a clip from you? <laughs> they did not. They I, they, I, it was not requested for comment, which was a shame. Uh, <laughs> um, that is too bad. Uh, what else you got? Now, it is a slow week for us as well. So, as always, I will ask if you want to do the vagina talk here, Jimmy. The V? The, the talk of the, the V. The other V. The other V. v. I, think, I think it's better if, uh, you know, that gag kind of goes like Eric's. No, let's do it. Let's do, let's it. do it. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I don't so, even remember what the story was. Okay. So this, this is, is something this is you. Is this something you discovered on Reddit? Yes, this is on Reddit. This is a. Uh, uh, do you want do you, you want me to read it in my TV broadcasting ahead. voice? Sure. sure. All right. I'm uh, actually different voices will be needed in this. So do it. All right. So the headline on Reddit says, "My girlfriend makes her V talk to me and will not stop. She's amazing, cute, funny, emotionally self aware, great communication skills. <laughs> what an odd thing to put in there. Everything I've ever wanted. She's also quirky and dorky." which is new for me, but I enjoy it. After a lifetime of dating, quote, bad unquote, I will now forever endorse dating dorks, except this one thing. She thinks it's incredibly funny to manipulate her vagina and provide a voice for it. I will be, I will be just minding my own business, playing Vidya or working on my laptop or whatever, and then boom. Hey, handsome, how was your day? Are you hungry? I bought cheese it. That's just in my my thought of what his girlfriend's vagina's voice would sound like. There she is, dress hiked up, no panties, both hands gripping her vulva a foot from my head and making her lips talk to me in a horrible high pitched gro- oh Grover esque muffin voice. Sorry, let me do it again. So I was your daddy. Are you hungry? I bought cheese it. Was that better? I don't yeah. <laughs> that paints a way more accurate visual. Thank you for um, that, James. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's, is, is he being too picky? I, d- I don't know that I could get past that one. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, maybe you the know? Grover voice, but I don't know. It's, it kind of sounds fun and playful at the same time. Well, I mean, also, once, uh, probably, I mean, once you know. maybe. <laughs> you know, some drunken night. Oh, that's pretty funny. That was really funny when you did that. But like Let's, every day. Here, here. I mean, are you are you? Yeah. What are you gonna say to her? Get your vagina out of my face. Yeah, that's never something like, I've said. Yeah, before. exactly. Like it, this, it feels kind of counterintuitive. No, <laughs> it's a discourage this type of behavior. Honestly, but don't you think, I think he's? 
I, I think he's got a... I <laughs> No, I think he's got a great girl there, you know? <laughs> I think Sorry, he's, he's got, got a great, great girl. girl. Mm-hmm. He's got all these things. Yeah. Really? He's got a great girl. Play ball. Get into yeah. it. Bring and out he... that, bring out your boy and have a conversation with the with the vagina. Hello, and lady. He... I love Jesus. Let's have a bite. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Hey, is that time. how your penis sounds? <laughs> Find out on Lester's OnlyFans. <laughs> That's what it's, it's yeah. going to be Lester talking about. <laughs> I actually, I actually think that's probably how Lester's penis would sound. Let's do our own, uh, our own penis voices. <laughs> I think uh, mine would be higher. Like it would be more like, "Hey, everybody!" <laughs> like Mickey Mouse. A lot, a lot of personality. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Puffy? <laughs> Mine would sound like it's in a hostage video. It's been abused so much. <laughs> help me. God, God, please help me. It's just I, blinking I just, at the camera. Just, just tell him. Just take one day off. One day. Take, help me. <laughs> please. Oh. Sorry, it's off to you. <laughs> Uh, mine would be the voice of God. <laughs> <laughs> nice and deep. Anyway, uh, maybe do we need yeah. to put a put a warning uh, label on this episode? You know, yes. I like it to be clean for the yeah. kids. Yes. You know? We should have known when when this guy said he had a lifetime of dating bad. B-s, this might bad. B-s. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, I know. I regret that segment. <laughs> Let's end on a positive <laughs> note. Are, are we done? We can save the you. songs for next week. Yeah, save yeah, the songs for next week because we it's nothing like a lame segment that we want to drown drag out for two months. <laughs> I'm sure we'd never the, do that. I'm sure the people who submitted songs appreciate hearing that. <laughs> they took their time <laughs> to put their songs in. Hey guys, yeah. Why don't we do listener mail? Listener mail. Listener mail. Thank you for listening. All right, a lot of list, a lot of listener mail this week. Uh, quite a few people commenting on our uh, space talk from last uh, week. Hashtag science. Uh, Roger K writing in. I'd love to hear more of Puffy's conspiracy theories. Correct. LOL. Uh, not conspiracy theories. Thoughts. Thought. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Paul Trochin writes in uh, Puffy making me believe and Paul also sent in a video of uh, some conspiracy guy talking about how one of the first astronauts to go into space was brutally murdered and it's a conspiracy so I, uh, I followed that <laughs> All right, I am we sure you do at the meeting last week <laughs> <laughs> the tinfoil committee um, if, you're pa- not- if Puffy did a podcast with Aaron Rodgers would you listen I, absolutely yes. no i'd be producing be it <laughs> exactly can you imagine the three of us out in cali just wa- <laughs> watching whales <laughs> licking poisonous toads and podcasting it'd be amazing anyway um what were we doing you were listening uh, to space talk yes uh conspiracies oh, talk, that's how we got there uh you're so people do island. are people generally our listenership in agreement with puffy that the moon landing was fake because i need uh, to know uh, it would going seem forward what our listenership believes it it was pretty split i think some of them believe i think some of them were a bit more sarcastic uh you're a tapi island wrote in can't wait to hear a new segment this week puffy's conspiracies uh so i'm sure we'll get to that in a second uh jeff laughlin writes in love the big space debate my argument is i always I always give is Russia and China wouldn't let us off the hook without checking and making sure that the landing sites are real rebuttal puffy are they all in on it? I, I appreciate China Jeff's Russia support, but do we really need to provide proof that yes. the landing was real? Is Look, that yes. where we're at? Puffy proof. came on this podcast a week ago and poured his heart out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying fact. that it was the moon landing didn't happen 100%. I just say there's a chance. It didn't it happen on the moon. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it was a great production. So Steven you're not so much a conspiracy presents. theorist as a conspiracy possibilist. Enabler, <laughs> I believe is the term. Enabler. Enabler, yes. <laughs> I'm Enabler. just I just like to be well informed. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a thinker and I'm a 
<laughs> I can't even. But here, but not to think that much. The, the problem with our society right now is people think they're becoming well informed, but they're becoming ill informed by reading more. I disagree. Uh, the TikTok is very Crap. informative. Very. I've learned a lot of new things, and oh. uh, I'll continue my readings on the TikTok. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You guys read movies on Wikipedia and do your education on TikTok. What a world. TikTok University. It's been eight years and I'm starting to wonder about my choice in castmates. <laughs> I, might, took, I don't know how it took this I long. I think that but... says more about you than us. It I took you eight so. years. Yeah, exactly. uh, some responses here about backseat driving. Exiled Leaf fan writes, my vehicle record is driving record is good. Surprise, mildly surprising giving the Cleveland to Essa township drives. The golf driving record leaves much to be desired. Best described as off road, r- off roading meets bumper cars. So, a little rough on nice. the uh, golf course, I guess. All right. Uh, Maine Damey writes in I have a perfect driving record. I own a driving school, yet somehow my wife still questions everything I do when driving. She went, she even went as far as to hit the instructor brake on the passenger drive on the passenger right side <laughs> when I drove. We don't drive in that car together anymore. So basically, in his work car, she hit the brakes on him. That's pretty funny. That's a tough one. That's yeah. that's tough to recover from. I'm sorry. Grass I'd rather works. have the girlfriend speaking with her V mm. than the than, than the one who pulls up the emergency. But what if she's backseat driving with the V? <laughs> Watch out for that car, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that wouldn't be terrible. <laughs> are you turned on or are you worried? Um, I think I've seen movies that start that way. <laughs> films even. Uh, Ricky Schmidt writes in, my husband is highly observant, and analytical, and anxious, which results in excessive backseat driving patterns. Very concerned that somehow the entire world will fail miserably the second I operate a vehicle. <laughs> so sounds like Ricky uh, shares your... Uh, Yes. Experience there, Jimmy. We got Pete in Japan. If anyone wants to know, Pete in Japan tonight. Pete in Japan. All right. There you go. Uh, my backseat driver is fortunately non existent. However, I think it's because living in Japan, navigation is much easier for my wife, who can read all the signs in Japanese. So she navigates me, which is already involves mitigating dangers because she's telling me where to drive. So, oh, okay. There you go. Uh, and in some other, so that's the backseat driving and some other news, uh, Cody Holstein writing in, uh, regarding our Jeopardy clip that we played last week. Uh, you guys will remember that, uh, she, uh, she, she couldn't identify yes. Mary Lou Retton, right? She or Scott Hamilton. She thought it was Mary Lou Retton. Yes, <laughs> yes, correct. Uh, so in defense of the Jeopardy contestant, she explained that that same episode earlier in that same episode, she had broken her glasses the day before the taping and was struggling. Uh, Still made for a funny moment, but obviously makes a lot more. That's tough sense. luck because you could have a whole category of video, you okay. know, visual questions, and that would be mm-hmm. tough. Yeah, no, it's, uh, well, of course. I had a, you got blindsided. I had a write in from uh, Eric St. Pierre who was asking if we still did the Where Are You From segment. And oh, no, nice. to, to no, which I don't. said, I think it's permanently, we always do it. Uh, he wanted, because he didn't think I could pronounce this, obviously underestimating my French, Eric St. Pierre from St. Augustin de Mort. De De Mort. Mm-hmm. Eric St. Pierre from St. Augustin de De Mort. Nice. Yeah. Put that it on our map. Like do we very, have a little map? Do we have a little uh, map that's good. dotted? We should have a little yes. map where we dotted. Puffy, Puffy, put it on the map. Yeah. Yep. I put it. Puffy's, on Puffy's got a map right back there, there for sure. It's on right there. Put it on. Uh, snack bites. Yeah. Pete writes in. Thanks for the shout out, boys. Bump was even very complimentary of Jimmy. Mr. Nero. Off the record, wow. of course. So not on the actual pod, but Bump was complimentary of you, Jimmy. Oh. Bump is uh, uh, leading our coverage this week at the Players' Championship. Rory had it to eight under here in round one as we're taping this. He just double bogeyed 16, unfortunately. Uh, Ooh, break, no. Breaking news. Canadian Nick Taylor at six under, one shot off the lead right now. So by the time you listen to this on the weekend. 
choking dog. So is oh, is the, the players now known as like the ninth major behind all the live major events? Oh, you just stop. Yeah. Between this and your conspiracy oh, theories. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, 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 <laughs> I feel like Lester's on a bit of a delay, but that was an epic reaction. A bit? <laughs> a bit of a delay. We haven't noticed that at all today. He's, la- he's laughing on, at the vagina stuff now. Yeah, he's now just kidding. He, 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 he just got the puppies beat his voice. He just saw the, the picture of the crypto guy. Now, Jimmy, what makes you more mad? Puffy's conspiracies about the moon yeah. or his belief in the live tour. Which makes me more angry? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Uh, fine, the moon. I put up with your live garbage all the time, even though you guys rewrite history. As what, hold on. What, what, what is your... Rewrite what are history. you so like... Like, what's what's so important to you about the moon landing? Like being real. Like why why the, is that like I have a very big problem in the sand. with the misinformation around the world right now and mm-hmm. the the things that are a hundred percent proven over and over factual being doubted because there's so much crap out there and making making uninformed misinformed, excuse me, people like yourself doubt facts about the world. A, which is why we are where we are in the world right now with Certain politicians being popular in certain countries. And that's why <laughs> Sneaky Salamander <laughs> yeah. sent in this photo claiming that it's you James bastards. Duffy, although it might not be. You bastards. The Crypto Jimmy. Crypto hey, uh, Jimmy. I was going to tell a story. Right. And I was going to tell a story to start this whole segment, and then I turned it over to you by mistake. Uh, this will <laughs> probably be old by the time you listen as well. But <laughs> What a mistake. Um, <laughs> it was supposed to be... The Yarmir Yager bobblehead night in Pittsburgh. Okay. And the truckload of bobbleheads was stolen on the way to Pittsburgh for the arena. What? So wow. I, I need to know if you guys think this was a like a planned heist. Inside job, guaranteed. And or I'm these guys at... just actually like how do you peddle Yager bobbleheads on the black market? Do you guys know anyone who was recently in Pittsburgh? Ooh, <laughs> trying to fit in wearing Pittsburgh nope. jerseys. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know. What's behind over his left shoulder, right shoulder? <laughs> Look at all those bobbleheads in Lester's room. <laughs> no wonder his mic's not working. Or do you, you don't think these guys just heisted a truck thinking they might get something great and they ended up oh, with 10,000 was... bobbleheads? Ooh, that's it. That's like instant karma if that's what happened. I just don't know how you get rid of 10,000 Yager bobbleheads wow. on the black market. Very well, slowly. I mean, Minor yeah, hockey. Exactly. <laughs> you got, <laughs> you can, so it's the day. long game. It's the long game, Jimmy. <laughs> hey, I got to tell you one last story that just shows that it's going to be Jimmy's year in golf. They're in I played golf. Right now. I played golf. Uh, what day is today? I played golf on Tuesday. Before March 10th, you you uh, you won Wednesday. your own bet. You it was before March 10th. Tuesday, I played golf on Tuesday, and uh, so I'm on like the 14th hole, and we're walking up the fairway. For some reason, I looked at my bag and I'm like, I lost my pitching wedge. Oh, now Jimmy never loses his clubs. He's fairly organized, but I'm like, oh, I, I like you, you, when you're when you lose a club, it's like a piece of you is missing. And so I say to the guys, I'm like, they're, they're like, well, when did you use it? Right? That's the obvious thing. You, you leave it on the last hole by the green. But I couldn't think of any time I hit my pitching wedge the whole day. So I ran back to the group that was behind us, and they didn't have my pitching wedge. And so now I'm like, so I call the pro shop, and I'm on hold. And just as I'm walking up the 14th fairway, I say to myself, oh, I hit it in the woods on the fourth hole. And when I hit in the woods, sometimes I'll take two clubs in there because you don't know if you're going to come out low or come out high. Mm, So, And then I realized as I was walking, I'm like, oh, wait a second. The fourth hole is right adjacent to this 14th fairway that I'm walking on. So I literally turned to my left, walked 10 yards straight into the woods, and there was my pitching wedge. So the exact moment that I realized I lost my pitching wedge, I was 20 yards away from my pitching wedge. Isn't that something? How much is Universal going to pay for that story? 
know. I'm like, when did the murder happen? Because <laughs> that was the yeah, only you're thing going into the woods, story. dressing up a little, Jimmy. Yeah, it wasn't a great story, okay? But it think, made a uh, uh, I thought, you know, for the golfers, a few golfers in our audience, they might understand how much incredible luck so, and karma oh, yeah. that was. <laughs> so basically, to you, that means you're going to have an incredible year now. Golf, incredible yes? year. Yeah, just because I just think it's an it's just a sign. Okay. You believe in signs? <laughs> Early I'm sure we all do. <laughs> You're starting anyway. to lose it, Jimmy. You can cut that golf story out if you didn't like. No, it. I no, just, I, know, I thought it was. I thought it was cute. No, no we we're glad <laughs> no. you found it was good. It was good. It was, it was really good. No, you don't have to humor me, Puffy. No, I was <laughs> the, the part me. I like amongst us hasn't been there. Lost Although, for- and then and then you found it. Uh, we're done. Sorry, we got to go. We got a leaf game to do tonight. Puffy, I'll see you at work. Uh, Stoff, I'll see yeah. you next week. Uh, Lester, um, you can stay on for the next couple hours till you catch up on the end of this spot. <laughs> I think you're gonna enjoy it. We love you. Speaking, I, of, I, lame, I, speaking I, of lame segments, we talk about this whole space. <laughs> Is happening. I don't Thanks work there anymore. Maybe I'll get uh, Josh check out all of our my only fan pages. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> We're not done yet. <laughs> Lester's <laughs> only at the thirty minute mark. <laughs> Did you guys hear it? I didn't hear what you said, but <laughs> I don't know we why we're both so laughing over each other. <laughs> oh, man. I think you might What'd be you in the last podcast still. Uh, so we're are we not done? You had more stuff to do. Is that why you cut me off? No, no, I just started laughing because you were ending the podcast and Lester sounded like he was introducing a new segment. Hey, how are you? I got a question that I really want to ask you. Wait, don't hang up. I need to know, so I'm gonna try and push my luck. Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green, blue, black, or white? Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? And do you like the dunk tank at the fair? I know it's a little strange. My obsession with your choice of footwear in the rain I know That you're on TV But I need you to put your boots up on the desk for me Are you wearing your Hawaii boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green, blue, black, or white? Are you wearing your Hawaii boots tonight? And do you like the dunk bank at the fair? This is the part they call the bridge A bridge has water under it With rubber boots you can wade in the water Just don't fall in Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green, blue, black, or white? Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? And do you like a dunk tank? At the fair? Do you like the dunk tank? At the fair? The dunk tank, the dunk tank. At the fair? Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? No, seriously. Are you wearing your rubber boots? Don't hang up. Please? Somebody? Hey? Hey? Anyone?